I created this bicycle recently, basically as a show and tell. And I had a question on how to create a chain for this bicycle. So I looked it up on YouTube, as you've probably done. And I found a couple of really bad explanations of how to put a chain on a bicycle or on a couple of sprockets. I'm going to show you how I did this, and it's a lot simpler, a lot cleaner than the things that I've seen on YouTube. You have to have a couple of things in place before you get started. One is this sketch for the chain path. And this pretty much just lies on the face of the sprocket, or you could put it in the mid-plane of the, the sprocket itself. So if you look at this, uh, we can see that the sketch is lying on the outer face. It probably ideally should be on the mid-plane of the sprocket. The next thing that you need is a, is a model of your chain links. In the case of a bicycle chain, you have an inner and an outer link. And so I'm just going to pull both of these in from another window that I've got open and drop them into the model here. So let's make sure that both of those came in. Okay, there they are. And they came in together, so I'm just going to maybe pull them apart a little bit. And uh, now I'm going to start the chain component pattern. You don't have to pre-position these parts. You just put them in anywhere so you can see them and so you can grab geometry from them. But use the chain component pattern. This is on your assembly tab under the component pattern drop down. Okay, so from here you've got three different types of uh, linkages. I'm going to select this last one because this is the one that we're using with two different components. The other two will be for other types of chain mechanisms. The chain path, I'm going to use the selection manager because that makes it the easiest. And make sure that you, you've selected the uh, closed loop option and then you can click anywhere on the path and SolidWorks picks the whole thing. So now just use the uh, green check. So we've got the closed loop showing up in here. If you try to select this manually, it's not going to go well for you. Use the selection manager. Make sure that your sketch is clean. Use the fill path option. That will automatically populate the, uh, the path with chain links. And then in chain group one, zoom in and select one of the components one of the chain components. So I'm going to, going to pick the outer component and then here it just wants you to select something that tells you where's the pivot on one end of the link and where's the pivot on the other end of the link. So I'm going to uh, select that round edge. You can select a, a round edge or a circular face, I think even an axis or something like that. So now I'm it's switched to the second one, and I'll click there. Okay, then path alignment plane. This is a little trickier. I'm going to use the uh, going to use the flyout feature manager here to uh, to get this to get a plane basically off of the link. So the front plane goes right down the middle, and you notice already that it's starting to populate the chain. Okay, now because this is a two-part chain link, I need chain group two, and I'm going to, going to pick the inside part, and then I need to pick pivot at one end, pivot at the other end, and again, I need to pick an alignment plane. So I'm going to go back here and get my uh, other link and I need to see that uh, get the front plane from the other link and now it's populated the entire chain now you can see something a problem with it right here that we've got we got a gap and uh, there's not enough room for another complete link, so we pretty much need to either take out a half an inch or add three quarters of an inch 
to the path. Uh, one way that you could do this would be increasing the size of one of the sprockets. That's probably not what you want to do. In real life, the way you do this is you'd adjust the position of the rear wheel. By adjusting that, it changes the length of the path and it will allow you to get that extra link in there that's needed. I'm not going to do that right here. I'll let you fool with that. But uh, another thing that you can do is because you see in this, in the path I have, I've adjusted or I've allowed for a little bit of sag in the chain so that you see the chain actually droops a little bit under its own gravity. And so you can adjust the sag to either add or remove length to the chain and allow it to get that last, that last little link together. Okay, so now that I've got this, I'm just going to press the OK button, and there it is. I've got a full chain. I can uh, hide the sketch, make it look a little nicer. Okay, SolidWorks has removed the two uh, dummy parts that I put in, and it's just put them in the, uh, in the chain along the path. Thanks a lot for watching.